What's up, you guys? This is the quad with Chris Young. Um, anyone watching on on YouTube, I'm so sorry for me and Ryan. They got a nice show. <laughs> me and Ryan are both very tired right now. Uh, as always, I'm Chris. We got Haley the bear. That is I. I had the bear. <laughs> that was a tiger. It's the eye of the, the bear. Of the it's the. <laughs> Producer Josh. <laughs> Happy Monday. Happy Monday, guys. And Ryan from Miami. Could be the tie of the giraffe. That is I, a good please tell me segue. I, won. I would love to know the results of the poll. <clears throat> An overwhelming majority has sided with that a tie goes around where the collar of the shirt is no! and not around. Yeah, where the neck it, is, because then I think it's an ascot, technically. <laughs> These are people who've never worn ties before. I hate it. I hate it. Well, the queen of giraffes agreed with me as the well. Queen, who is the queen who of the giraffes? Queen? Your niece. Oh, damn. I asked her where yeah, she would wear the what? tie, and Actually, she goes at the base. So I don't, I don't even know if I've ever told this story before, but this is a great story to just get into an awesome Monday. I think everybody's in a good mood. We're having a good time. Even though Ryan and I are tired, <laughs> Ryan's definitely more tired than Lots me. Of I, I I have I have no business saying that I'm tired with all of the stuff that you've done, and we'll get to it uh, in sports. But man, <laughs> I, I will never forget taking my niece to Disney World because I had never been, and so I took my entire family, and because she loves animals and specifically giraffes. That was her, like, whatever you call it, your stuffy, your your teddy bear, your plushy, whatever the yeah. the thing that you have as a kid. Your animal. Yeah. She had a giraffe, and his name was Jeffrey. Like, hmm. it was it, was it like, Geo Geoffrey, though? Yeah, it was with a G. Okay. So it was Jeffrey. Which um, brings up, what were the, what were the names? Because everyone had one. So that was Jeffrey the giraffe. I had Tommy the turtle. <laughs> I had, you had a turtle? I had Tommy the turtle. I okay. Had, I had um, the very original Teddy the bear. <laughs> I, Teddy the bear. Yeah. We were I, got, I got photos. Should we compile these? Oh, Do you boy. have photos? Oh, no. I think I've still got Teddy. Yeah, somewhere. I've got that still. He is, I've still have Teddy. He like, I, I, I would like, I guess my thing as a kid is I would rub the nose and I like rubbed, rubbed it, it off. off and then I cried and so my mom had to sew it back on. Oh, I had Bambi. That's what I had in my you're, head. I'm you're like, there going, <laughs> what was mine? Oh I, I'm sitting here and I'm like, what stuffed animal was my favorite? And I was like, oh, it was Bambi. That was the fave. Okay, it was Bambi. So when uh, so Teddy Teddy was dressed as a clown. <laughs> he had he had like a clown hat. Yeah, I know. So ter terrifying. terrifying. <laughs> um, but when I was so you loved the movie It as a child. That's it's <laughs> very interesting. Story time with Josh. When I was very little, like one, my lung collapsed and I almost died. Oh Jesus! Yeah, Holy I crap. turned I turned blue in the car. And I was a bubble boy for like six weeks, like literally medicated tent, no outside world, no anything. They pump me full of steroids. How have I never heard this story? Just one of those, one of those things. My mother, I was just, you know, I'm one, I'm dying for like human contact to like tell me it's okay. My mom took my stuffed animal, Teddy, put it underneath the tent. And it's the only thing that I had to hold on to. And his hat, his hat, because of all the medicated air, got ruined and ripped off. And so he has this cul-de-sac <laughs> at the very top of his head. So what you're telling me is your childhood stuffed animal through a horrible, tragic event sacrificed himself for you. He did. And now has a bald spot. He has a bald spot, <laughs> but he's still, he's still kicking. I still got him. Well, now that uh, Ryan took us totally off topic, finish your story. No, 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 no. <laughs> this is not off topic at all. You're welcome. So uh, it, that was actually really cool. That's a great story. Because that's, I, I would have been interested alive, to know. Like yeah, really glad you're seriously. Yeah, me, me too. It was, we love you. It was it was close. It was close call back then. But yeah, I mean, as as someone who's almost died, I'm I'm not exaggerating. Like five or six times. Uh, yeah, it's, I'm, it's I'm glad to you're be here. here. It's I'm good glad to be here. here. Yeah. Uh, so <laughs> my niece has her stuffed giraffe. Right, she loves giraffes. She wants to see giraffes. So when we went to Disney, I went out of my way to get a room at animal kingdom and i got one that had like three bedrooms and we could it like looked out over the sanctuary so sometimes you'd see animals walking around but we go to check in 
And so it's two floors. I'm trying to describe this as best I can so you can picture it. You walk in. Basically, the main floor is floor two. And then there's a spiral staircase past like where the check-in desk is on the left, straight ahead of you. It goes down, and then you have the the basement floor, pretty much. And you can walk out into the sanctuary, and there's like, you know, it's gated and everything and like covered. So you can just walk out there if the animals are out there. And um, we, we fly uh, on a Southwest flight. My niece insisted that I sit next to her in the middle seat. <laughs> so she could look out the window. She's, I mean, she's like four and a half sure. at this point. Middle seat gang. Let's yeah. Go. She's like, they're like, who do you want to sit next to? She's like, Uncle Bubba, which is what she calls me. And I was like, oh, God. Okay. So I'm, you know, Bubs. my big, my Dude, big self, you're doing this. Six, four, 250 just is just squeezed into that. a, yeah, I'm squeezed into a middle seat. And, um, we're we're talking she's having a great time we get there as we're checking in i this it made the whole trip before anything else happened she just grabbed like the side of my shirt and she goes uncle baba i'm like what and i turn and the other thing that they had as a feature is it's just two stories of glass so you can see if there's animals out there and there's a giraffe and she just goes, Jeffrey. <laughs> and my sister like lights up cause she's like, <laughs> my kid is so happy right now. I'm like, do you want to go see him? And so she like nods really hard. I was like, do you want me to take you or do you want your mom to take you? She goes, you. And I was like, okay. So I like pick my niece up and walk her out there and showed her a giraffe and, it's amazing. Yeah, it was the beginning of the trip. It was awesome. How different do you think your career would be if your name was Bubba Young? <laughs> I don't oh know. God. I don't know. Um, I feel like... Uh, I feel like he'd be playing off Bubba Sparks. <laughs> BY, baby. <laughs> we got Bubba Sparks Bobby. and Bubba Young. Oh, yeah. I, Shout I don't out to know, Bubba dude. Sparks. Love you, bro. <laughs> yeah. Love Bubba Sparks, by the way. Yeah. Um, anyway. All right, guys. Heads up on merch. Still not here. It's Supply not. chain issues suck. It has nothing to do with us. It really does. And I was supposed to get it the first week of this of this month, and now we are now past for the first week of this month. <laughs> so, we are now into the second yeah, week. We're in, yeah, I know, so, right? uh, I'm just patiently waiting as much as you are. I know I put a date in there, received by this time, but it is coming. And thank you guys for who are still out there buying as soon as it comes in, we will model it for you. I'll yeah, make, which, by I'll the make way, them put on the t shirt. Just, <laughs> yeah, just so you know, when we're like, hey, go ahead and order the merch, because it takes this long to get it, you need to order it. Yes. Because once it's gone, it. it's gone. Get yeah, because it. it'll take another time. And I, I have heard requests for uh, um, the, the sweatshirts in the wintertime. Which, oh, it's happening. Ooh, yeah, it's happening. Happen. World of sweatshirts. I like Roll that. Fall and winter. I, I can't wait. Yeah. Because I know we've been a big thing about Fallen tank tops Tennessee. and t-shirts, but a sweatshirt will happen. Just no sweatshirts are also expensive. I'm trying to think of exactly what that is. <laughs> so I wrote the, the reason I was saying that. That's a, a song that me, Corey Crowder, and uh, Tyler Hubbard wrote, I believe. Called Fall in Tennessee. It's called Fall in Tennessee. Nice. Yes. Fall in Tennessee. It's not falling oh. to me. No, it's not that. Okay. It's not falling to me here in that. Tennessee. And I'm. Oh. By the way, I'm an octave down. I'm being very like. Just yeah. You don't need to. You don't need to light it up today. All right, fine. <laughs> you make me wanna fall in Tennessee. There it is. There All it right, is. let's go. By the way, congratulations. To the quad with Chris Young. Uh oh. For 500,000 uh -oh. streams, baby. You did it. You did it. You Not did us. it. You guys. You, you did Thank it. You, you. You. I am getting you. the quad a gold plaque for no reason <laughs> other than we have 500,000 streams. Um, and it, by the way, is it 500,000 streams or 500,000 hours? Total place. It's total, total place. Total it's total place. So that's, that's an hour of so it's, it's Yeah. Um, Ooh, that's, that's a lot awesome. of hours. That we love awesome. you guys. Thank you so very much 
for continuing to listen to us for two years now. Almost three. We're coming up on our three year anniversary at like, the turn of the year. Well, it's the, well, the we're start still of year early. three. Yeah. Yeah. So, hey, so we're so still here. Number? Still here. Like, rate, review, you know? That's 20,000 that right? days. Does yeah, that sound right? Oh yeah, my God. that's right. Wow. I'm not good at math, but I'll believe you. Huh. Yeah, everybody just de- defaults to what you're telling us. Huh. Have we, we even started wrong. a subject yet of the quad? And by yeah. the way, no. I am I am so sorry. That was not. I I wrote two songs in one day. This is in 2020. So this I wrote this song September 30th of 2020. I wrote two songs that day. I wrote one with um, Tyler Hubbard. It was not this one. This one was with our buddy Jaron Johnson. Mm. From Cadillac Three, yes, who we need to have on the quad. Let's Absolutely, Let's that it. guy has written so many great songs. That that he's he's going to punch me for uh, forgetting <laughs> the one, forgetting the- that he was on that song with me. But um, yeah, that was twenty twenty. I can't be blamed for that. I I blame the and we pandemic. Were- <laughs> and we were, yeah, in 2020, we were all writing like maniacs, too, because there's nothing oh else to do. Oh, my God. That's all I could do. I yeah. just sat in my house and wrote songs. I, I like. I watched a lot of Netflix. Wrote all the songs for my pub deal in that year. <laughs> I watched a lot of Netflix. I'm not a songwriter, so. Uh, I, think we all, I think we all did. Uh, speaking of, let's go to music. Music. End of a bar, send it number four. Let's go! Let's go, baby. Woo! Um, at an event the other day, and if you guys... <laughs> which, by the way, Instagram now hates photos. It so does. No one, it, 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 does not pop up nothing. On, it does not pop up on your algorithm at all. If you want to see some cool photos that, that I posted... No, why do I don't get likes anymore? I've been wondering why my yeah, likes are that's why, significantly that's why. down. At yes. Chris Young Music, go check it out. Um, I will always link the quad when we do stuff together. We're talking about doing a new photo shoot for the quad. Um, it, it's just amazing. I, I found out the other day that famous friends is double platinum and drowning is platinum. It's awesome. Which is just absolutely ridiculous. Cause especially in the case of drowning, that song is so personal to me and it, it, basically ended its chart ra- did you just burp into the microphone i was trying to keep it quiet sorry <laughs> it was way louder than I wanted it oh That's my the god I would do. It's like, oh, <laughs> there it is i knew which, which button it was it's proud, it's proud good job good my job bad. my bad my bad as i'm getting like thought, emotional was, and talking I know, I about it i thought it was gonna be a little guy and then it was not i'm sorry <laughs> um no seriously i i am so so grateful that anyone ever wants to listen to my music. And I mean that, uh, but in the case of this one, drowning went platinum and that song only got to 23 on the chart. So, um, shout out to all you guys that love that song. I hope that song means to you what it means to me. Um, in the best way. Cause obviously that song is about loss. I don't ever want anyone to have to go through that, but it's part of life. So, uh, I love you guys. That was super, super cool. And then, yeah, now it, Mitchell even, I went to his event where he just found out he has a billion streams. Let's go! Yeah. Ten pen! Ten pen! Don't do that, Dan. Tenny so, Penny! <laughs> so excited for him. So I went to his event, and then he came to mine. And I was just like, Love that. what a dude. What a like, guy. That's, that's awesome. Uh, he has a new record coming out. Yes, he does. Um, is it This Is The Heavy? Is that what it's called? This Is The Heavy. I believe he's that's... He's been putting out a lot of new music, which I love. That's awesome. Guy is a he's machine. On, he's, on a, he's on a roll right he now. He is a machine. machine. He's been putting out hits before he knew he was putting out hits. It, you are not wrong. Mm-hmm. You are not wrong. That like, is totally factual. The, the fact that people go back and listen to his other songs and can still sing them before they even knew who he was. I don't want to say this without like going looking at the photos. I think one of them was Triple Platt. He had a triple platinum. Dang. I was like, let's go, bud. Hey. hey. Is it the Biatch song? <laughs> <laughs> no, but that is, Witches? A, that, Witches? Is a, that is a that is a fancy way of getting around saying the actual word. Good for you. <laughs> that was well done. Yeah, no, That's that was the, well played. First of all, can we acknowledge that it's the first time you ever like <laughs> you followed, you censored you followed yourself? HR rules we appreciate for the first it. time in two and a half years. That's like the second time I censored myself. Okay. Let's yep. be real. We are making progress. 
months moving forward. Day, day so, 900. A less, <laughs> less angrier bear. 20,000 days. Um, My football season's coming, so. Oh, boy. <laughs> uh, Wait anyway. till that comes. <laughs> oh, Lord. Yeah. We'll, we'll get to that. Don't worry. We're, we're almost there. Um, I played in Alabama this weekend, and I did a thing. Uh-oh. You did the thing. The thing yeah. that happens. When Which you play this in- is why I have no. I didn't get sleep. I normally go to bed after a show. It takes a while to like kind of come down off adrenaline, and because we were in Alabama, we were fairly close. Uh, so it was only a six-hour bus ride back home. So I got home at like five in the morning. So I basically had like three hours of sleep, and um, then can go to bed. I tried. My dog was awake at that point. He's like, oh, no, it's it's time for the day. It's like, good morning. I let him off the Mm -hmm. bus, and and Porter was just like, uh, here we go. I was like, "Uh, buddy. Could could we not? Can we we not be awake now? But dogs don't care. Nope. So he, like, I went upstairs, and he just started barking, so I never went to sleep. Um, Anyway. I did on stage sing part of Sweet Home Alabama. And how what? Did, and how did it go yes. over? Yes. <laughs> Just like you'd think. I was mm-hmm. in Alabama. They loved it. Um, I was making the joke about like, and I do this not every show, but some shows where I'll be like, all right, before Freebird guy shows up, because someone requested neon, and I normally don't do neon in the set anymore because it also died at 23. Mm-hmm. But people love that song. I know, great song. they do. Um, so I we played it, and then everybody just starts shouting stuff. And I'm like, okay, whoa, 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 hold up. Before this goes, like, completely off the rails. Guys, we're not. We're not doing this because Freebird guy is going to show up. I'm going to get this out of the way. And I finally had Kevin Collier back on the road. Yes. Welcome back, Kev. Yay, Kev. His hand had been broken, so he hasn't been out for, like, five weeks, six weeks. And uh, he did the the free bird solo that mm-hmm. everybody wants for like thirty seconds, and then I was like, and that's it. And then somebody goes, "Sweet home Alabama," and I was like, "Okay, I'm in Alabama. I should probably play it." And I was like, "I haven't played this song." Like it, it, the weirdest thing is, like in your head, you know the lyrics to songs. <laughs> But you're like, but can you do it without it? But no. can you do it without no. looking at them? It's a different thing. Way different. It's a, such a different thing. Way different. And I was just like, if I mess up Sweet Home Alabama in Alabama. <laughs> I'm getting booed off the stage. They, they will boo me out of here. Yeah, and you'd I, be booed more than Gus Malzahn. Yikes. Eek. Ooh. Anyway, uh, got through it. They were so happy. I think. <laughs> Everybody seemed reach, happy. Reach out if, if you're, you're Alabama, unhappy. You're, no, 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 do not reach out if you're unhappy. I already got enough of that. Everybody <laughs> hates everything. Um, what is it about that song? Because like you go to New York, no one asks for New York, New York. You go to Chicago, no one asks for that. Kansas City, nope. Well, I think because like Alabama doesn't get the love that a lot of those cities you just named get because they don't. It's not a major metropolitan. It's yeah, just, one. It's it, it's. You just named cities. Not a state. Right. You said you played in Alabama. You yeah. didn't even say a city. I didn't even say where I played. Right. Um, but it, it, it was awesome. I, it was just a great show. Thank you to anybody that was there. We had way too much fun. But go uh, go check the photos, Chris Young Music on, on Insta or anywhere else for that matter. Did but, you, uh, one of the things, Dick, cool. have you ever heard people in Alabama sing Dixieland Delight? Have you heard them throw <laughs> yes. in the college football slides in there? Yeah. Which is and Tennessee too. Yeah, I, I can't yeah, yeah. repeat it on this, but exactly, I, you can't say what it is. I was actually at Tin Roof. You, you've heard it. Li- it. It's I was listening to it for the first time. I'm like, what are they saying? And then I started listening to the lyrics. I'm like, oh, this is a college football rivalry Screw song, which is you. awesome. That's actually and I was Tennessee like, too. okay, that's yeah. that's pretty pretty. All right, Alabama, I'll give it to you. Yeah, roll 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 tide. Maybe. I. I per, I'm saying Let's it right now. Again, At someone, please. someone is going to cover Dixie Land of Light. Like as, much, a, as a new much, version? Yeah, as a new version. Much like Darius Rucker did Wagon Wheel. Wagon Wheel. It's going to happen. But Wagon Wheel wasn't Wagon Wheel like that Dixie Land of Light is. Does that make sense? It wasn't as big of a. Uh, right, 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 yeah. right, right, right. 
So that would be. I don't know. I, it's they, time, I feel like they got to wait 20 right, more so years. Will you do me a favor? Right. right. Will you do me a favor? Will you look up when Dixieland Delight was released as a single? Ooh. Because this is the thing. You say that. I say that. You say that. We forget that, like, so many 1983. people. 1983. Yeah. That was before I was born. Yeah. Yeah, it's coming up on 40 years. But it was one of those mainstream songs that's still popular. Doesn't matter. It's but been, Wagon it's Wheel been wasn't. 40 years. Yeah, Wagon Wheel was. Oh, but, yeah. But I'm talking about when you're... Wagon Wheel was, Wagon Wheel was played by every Nashville band down on Broadway for years before, before Darius cut that. Darius didn't even know the song. Well, right, but you're missing the point of what I'm saying. Is you say Darius didn't even know the song, and everyone in Nashville knows the song. But I'm talking about like around the like around the country. Everyone knows Dixieland Light. Not everyone knew Wagon Wheel, so that's why it was so easy to make it such a big smash these I days. I don't like, think that's the case. And I think the people I think that it's w- because it was familiar to who it was familiar to, and there's going to be people that don't like it. Which is the case of the all right the Cole Swindell song that you are I not a it. fan oh, of. I love why? that song. But again. I hate it. I it, hate it is, that song. It is Sorry, familiar. Cole, it is familiar. It. And that's that's the biggest thing. But it's like taking a song that still plays all the time. Yes. Exactly. All, on, Everything you're saying is actually playing into my point. Also, we have to weigh. We live in Nashville. We are hit over the over the head with it all the time. Like, yeah. It, what I, what is normal to us and what random, we are, what we are tired of is not the general consensus. Random person in a line number three that listens to country music in the middle of the country, random state, may not feel that way. Do you know mm-hmm. who the original demo was for Wagon Wheel? I found, yes. I found, I found it fascinating. Well, no, it's it's not the Bob demo. Bob Dylan. It's who wrote it. Bob, that's Bob crazy. Bob Dylan wrote it. He wrote it? And the chorus and the melody all came from Bob Dylan, yeah. which is, yeah, that's a fun fact that I never realized until this moment. Have you looked at you, all, all along the Watchtower? Oh God, those, <laughs> we're going to go down a rabbit hole. We're going to go down a rabbit hole. My my point being, I just I don't think that that's also Bob Dylan. Oh, okay. covering something <laughs> that is that okay. I'm just going to say it. What if tomorrow? Tomorrow. Stop it. <laughs> I've got the rights to that one. We're fine. <laughs> We're okay. <laughs> um, what if tomorrow I covered I Swear with Boys to Men? Oh, that'd be great. Can we do that? Which was an all for one song. <clears throat> and then Mark Wills did it in what, right. 90. There are going to be people that remember the original version. They're going to be like. But you're talking a different uh, genre. No, no, I'm not. Yes, you are, because I'm, people I'm who listen about to you may not have listened to that. But I'm talking about something that's already a hit. Yeah, it doesn't matter if you're porting a, a pop yeah. song over to country. It's it doesn't just matter. Whether, whether it was a massive hit or not. I, I, I still don't think Dixieland Delight would be like Wagon Wheel if someone redid it. All right. Well, what are you listening to? I'm listening to Dixieland Delight. <laughs> That is my song for this now, week. Now, is that the Bob Dylan version or? <laughs> uh, Anybody that just like jumped in right there is going to be so confused. They're like, Bob Dylan? Bob Dylan? Did Dixie Lane Delight? Did he cover it recently? What? You know, there was an artist going around St. Pete that was creating art and signing it as Blob Dylan. And now that's all I can think about when I hear of Bob Dylan is Blob Dylan. Blob Dylan. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Oh, my Lord. Okay, Bear, what's yours for this week? <laughs> Okay, so this song actually has been around for like a hot second, and I was like, oh, like I've always liked the song, and then sometimes you know how songs just hit differently, and you're like, I love this song. It reminds me of a modern day uh, Paramore song, but good for you, Olivia Rodrigo. Hmm. It's because <laughs> what I was gonna say. We're, not, we're not gonna get into that. No, 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 no. the shit. Out yeah, of I was gonna say. <laughs> You're gonna have to bleep that. Nope, I'm keeping that one. But oh, it's a good man. song. Oh yeah, she got sued over that. I believe. Did, From didn't Paramore, she, didn't yeah. she sue her? Oh yeah, they they sued her and they were. She was found guilty and had to make Haley and one of the Pharaoh brothers uh, co-writers and pay them like a million dollars each. Yep. Wow. See, it reminds me of it, but I didn't put the two. <laughs> Dixie <like>. Land Life. <laughs> if you uh. if you go on YouTube, they do a mashup of the two songs overlaid on each other. They are the exact same song. Same key, too. Fun I think fact. I, I still think I like the lyrics to Good For You better, though. 
That's fine. It was just second. <laughs> mm-hmm. Go ahead. Um, so I just watched on Netflix. They have a documentary about Woodstock 99 Ooh. and the dumpster fire, quite literally dumpster fire oh, it that was, it was. Yeah, no, it was awful. And it's a fascinating watch. It's a three-part miniseries. Each part is each day of the festival and just how it devolves over yeah. the course of the weekend. How um, it was not what it was before the advent of... No, and it's it's just, it's a really interesting thing, like, because we're, we're old enough to remember it. Do you remember 99 vaguely? Not so much. We remember it. Um, <laughs> just me and Josh. Just, just he, he, what, what, what people old. not watching this on video... Uh, did not notice is that he just pointed to Ryan and Ryan looked terrified. So <laughs> Ryan's like, I don't know. I, what remember, that is. I remember the New Year's going into 2000, so I remember 99. But do you? But do you remember that festival? No. Like, is that like the Fry Festival? No, That's there was fire. fire. Festival. Oh, well. <laughs> Fry Electronics brought to you by Fry. Fry. Le- um, brought anyway. to you by Radio Shack. <laughs> anyway, <Yeah>. uh, <laughs> the seminal track of the whole thing break stuff by limp biscuit which happened exactly at the worst possible time in the order of bands for what happened yep um so break stuff by limp biscuit there it is all right well you kind of went rock and mine's sort of new rock okay hardy sold out which i really like that song all right i love first of all one that you referenced hardy because he's awesome too that you refer to that as new rock because anybody that thinks that there's not a sub genre of country that has not kind of become the replacement because there are no rock stations anymore is nuts. That's what Jason Aldean did. He made it he made it rock. There's a and, reason why And early Brantley too. Yeah. Yep. There's a reason why well but even before Brantley, there's a reason why Kid Rock showed up on stage when we were in Detroit and I was opening for Jason Aldean and he was covering Cowboy. Yes, agree with you. I, but I will say this reminds me like day to remember type of oh, just undertones. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. But it's, it's great. And it, it, what, what, it was so out. out. Yeah. When yeah. that beat drops, it's like, okay, cool. Like, and I didn't, I didn't like, I heard that song playing some of the local bars and I'm like, ah, what song is that? And then I don't know how he, he so has great. such, pure vocals by so the way because he's on something on my next record that we wrote together yes let's go and he's singing all the harmonies can we get him on here um, i feel like we need, yeah. we need hardy on the pod like we, we need to sit down because his story like who he's written but with, I, don't, I just don't understand how he is able to go so pure and then go wall to wall and it still is like how, but, it, it's, but it's even more like wall to wall yeah, yeah it's, it's like it's, screamer. I can't do it it's I can't screamer do type it. of rock I can't, I can't do it either which like, like that is my like most emo. aggressive it's like yeah. country emo it's got every undertone like again, like, involved it's great if you ask me to do that like pure it's like wall to wall versus wall to wall like that's all I got and he is so and much is, more aggressive yep. than that it's so good. He's just a very talented right. guy. That's really well. That that whiskey jam was I, second to yours. The one you played it, I think, one of the mo- more popular ones that they've had. Yours was uh, had the set biggest. the bar yeah, for well, it. The biggest. Chris's had, was the biggest. Yeah. No. Well, they they no. They've started moving the stage back, so they've actually got. They've had, oh, they, there's been a couple. Riley Green's was bigger than mine. Um, that, Morgan Wallen showed up. There were more people there because they moved the stage back. That was the same day. Mm mm. No, I I played on that one. That was not mine. He's talking about when I did it and had and just headlined it out of nowhere. Oh, I showed up and played acoustic on that one. That's for like right. Three songs. Okay. Yours I did October my of own. Yeah, yeah. It, was, it was before the pre-pandemic, pandemic. Yeah, yeah pre pandemic. But yeah, that you're right. They have but moved the stage. Did, back. Yeah, Hardy. Um, and Keith Urban was there. Like, by the way, there. anyone that anyone that is seen anything on the internet it is so greatly exaggerated it doesn't even make sense everybody was like oh the the ceiling fell through and the gas line ruptured and it, everything caught on fire that's not none of that <laughs> happened. still there yeah it's still <laughs> what about there winners? it's still, still open okay. in fact they still did the concert that night they had too much overflow on the f- they've got two decks but one of them uh a bunch of people they were jumping up and up and down. Oh God! Well, that'll on the do deck. It. That, that'll and and it was too many people yep. that are supposed to be there, and it broke one of the timbers and it 
snapped the line that goes to the gas main that was underneath that. I believe this is speculative. Sources, that is, but that is rumors. They, they, that they had everyone well. removed from the area. They Fire shut came. it off there at, at that point where that gas line was. And then they just basically roped off that deck and said, you can't go here anymore until they get it fixed. And then they put everybody back in and did the show. Yeah. Show looked awesome. I was jealous. Oh, it was, it was great. It was great. That's what you're listening to for this week. There was, there was someone and I'm not going to call anybody out, but, um, she was filming herself and she's like, the ceiling collapsed and you can see the ceiling above her head in the video. <laughs> it's like, okay, you might be being a bit melodramatic at this point. I was thought, I thought you were gonna say the word <laughs> no, being no, a bitch. No, 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 Halloween. It's already up. <laughs> it's already up, up over in West Nashville. Shut up. Is yeah. it already up? Oh yeah. Over by the over Wait, by the Trader Joe's. What? Gym. Yeah, yeah. It's August. Yeah, bro. All right. Here's here's my thing. Um no. yes, I know we've been doing music longer than we normally do. I hope everybody's okay with that. What are we doing for Halloween? I don't know. I, I, if anyone are we out doing there Austin is really Powers? good at Oh like all of us dressing Austin awesome Powers? Yes. My mini me? <laughs> Who's my mini me? I mean, a cat. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Bigglesworth. I always said I'm Felicity. So. <clears throat> oh, God. All right. We're going to table that. We got to figure yeah, that out. Gotta, yeah. All right. That's coming. See, I, I feel like it'd be funny if I was. A, you have to be Austin. Awesome. <laughs> no, I don't think so. No, no I don't one. think so. I, I actually like it if I'm not. I like it if Ryan is Austin Powers. Groovy baby. Yeah. 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 Would, so well, are we sure we want to do that? Because he would just be yelling phrases the entire night. Because this, I'm, I'm just gonna do say I this make because you this, this is, this, no. this no, is what I want to be, and it would be a very <laughs> difficult costume, but it'll work. It was like, I love gold. Nope. Nope. <laughs> You're close. Get in my belly, <laughs> Scottish. <laughs> Oh, I, Scottish. I eat because I'm sad. No, and I'm sad it's like, because I eat. I eat because I'm unhappy. There it is. And I'm unhappy because I eat. All right, we're going to table this. We're going to talk Shag about this. Yeah, we, need to, we need to figure out what it, that or we're all the villains. Throw and me it'll a be freaking number bone. Two. Number two. <laughs> Bring in the shocks! <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, no, we know who you are. <laughs> <laughs> oh god. Oh god. Let's go to movie. <laughs> Movies. All right. How many people saw this? Am I the only one? I saw nope. it last night. I saw it. I told you I, I couldn't. I know. Seven I know. Baseball I know. Games I know. You've been, days, so. you've been so busy, nuts, dude. But, I, uh, I, I'm curious to know what your thoughts were on it. So, oh my god. Oh my god. Sh- Mm. <laughs> we both said the same thing. Uh, when did you see it? Did you go? I went Saturday night. Okay. Uh, so I, I just, I am so mad at Rotten Tomatoes. I've never been more mad at Rotten Tomatoes. They gave this a fifty four percent. Rotten Tomatoes, tomatoes you, you are can get rotten. the hell out of here. Rotten Tomatoes, you are, you are rotten. Stupid. The movie I is hate Bullet you. Train, by the way, for those that didn't turn in last last week. It is yes. Bullet Train. Yes. With sorry, Brad Pitt. <laughs> I got over my skis. I'm sorry. Thank you, Ryan. You're welcome. <laughs> the movie is Bullet Train 2020. Uh, <laughs> Two. 2022. Action comedy. Two hours, six minutes. What are you doing? I'm trying to get him to not say a spoiler. Oh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. Because yeah. oh, okay. you were going you're gonna to ask because you yep, didn't see the yep, movie. Yep. And, yeah. I'm, and I'm trying to you, stop you him from doing it. Let, let, let him talk. Let him talk. I know exactly what you're looking at now. You're looking at the actors list, yep, aren't yeah, you? Yep. Yeah. Got it. So uh, 90% of Google users like this movie. Ladybug is an unlucky assassin who's determined to do his job peacefully after one too many gigs has gone off the rails. I love that they use that about a train movie. Fate, however, may have other plans as his latest mission puts him on a collision course with lethal adversaries from around the globe, all with connected yet conflicting objectives on the world's fastest train. 
<laughs> Are we going to do it? We have to. We, we have to do a little bit, but I don't want right. to do the very last yeah, yeah, one, yeah, which yeah, is yeah, why yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I pointed at that and waved Got him it. off. Got it. I'm sorry. I, I to me, this this was the the perfect marriage of like, if you took, and it's the, the director of Deadpool, right? Mm-hmm. So if you took the movie Snatch and Smoke and Aces and smashed them together and put it in Tokyo on a train, like that, that is what this movie is. Yeah. And it, it's so good. It's so good to me. I, I enjoyed this so much. It was exactly what I wanted. I, just, I, I really thought this was as close to perfect of a reveal. There's a couple twists that you don't see coming. I almost guessed one of them, but I, I picked the wrong. You're going to know what I'm talking about, Josh. Mm-hmm. Should I just go ahead and? Yeah, we can do that one. Can we go ahead and do that one? Uh, so uh, there is a part at the end where someone gets defeated because they use something that is what? Set, set up earlier. Set in up the- earlier in the plot. I'm still being vague because yeah. I honestly think you need you, to go see this movie. You should go see this movie. see this movie if you have not seen this movie. All right, so you love this. I am obs- This is in my top 10 favorite movies of all time. What? Whoa. Whoa. Yes. Holy crap. Okay. Hey. Not do, we a, only, do we have a list? Huh? Do we have a list of times? Yeah. We don't want to okay. dig that's, into that. That's big. Um, but I know that's big because by far, like, I've always been okay about Brad Pitt. I never want to see any other character from Brad Pitt ever again besides this character. Oh, he was great. He was great. It was this. by far the best character I think I've ever seen out of Brad Pitt in my entire life. Like, I loved everything about it. He, not only was he like, that is that is Ryan's that pissed. is <laughs> complete overreaction. Okay, well you I have don't not know that seen it. Is. You I haven't, haven't seen the movie, is. dude. It's, you haven't seen it. You don't get to. You don't get to. Are you it. kidding me? Achilles and Troy is the height of no, the no absolutely get, not. Ryan get, muted. Get out. Okay. Get so, out. Okay, so not only is this the perfect amount. It's beautiful. Of, <laughs> Ryan did. Not get only muted, is it the way. perfect amount of comedy, but the self, like the self acting against himself the entire time. Yeah, his own narration for himself was right. phenomenal, and the the banter between all of the villains in the movie, and it's just it was never ending. Like I was always on my toes, like what the hell is going to happen next? Because you're like, this popped, this popped, this popped, and obviously the whole spoiler alert. It's all about bad luck and good luck. That's literally like the oh, basis yeah. about the movie. And you're like, at some point, like you know it's going to happen, but you don't know when that it's going to do the flop for everybody and right. you're like when is this gonna happen so i mean that gets announced early on in the right. movie that i don't, I don't feel like that's too bad a spoiler no. there's no brad, slow parts brad pitt his character is based on he just says at the very beginning of the movie he goes i'm bad luck hence why he's it's ladybug like bad things happen around me and that there's a whole thing while they name him ladybug is because and the cameos could not have been more perfect. Well, that I don't want to give those away. I'm not, but that's what I'm saying. I'm like, it. there's cameos in here that are just flawless. <laughs> like, I also loved this movie, like a lot, yeah, a lot, a lot, a lot. Yeah, we nailed one. And the the struggle so going good. into this movie is like, we've seen Murder on the Orient Express. You've seen like collaborative movies with a with a nice cast and something happening on a train we've seen this like kind of overplayed at this point in no way was this movie anything like any of those anything like that it was paced perfectly i was laughing like i was probably annoying the people next to me because i was laughing so much um i couldn't have enjoyed this movie more i think that i really love while i'm not sure if it's the best brad pitt ever it's one of my favorite, and this is this character that he is now. The like, once upon a time in Hollywood, now this character, the older guy that's like still kicking everyone's ass and like being. Well, f- and he was in. He had a cameo in the Sandra Bullock movie. Mm-hmm. Oh my god, they were all. Oh, spo- ah. you, uh, oh come on! Uh, no, 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 no! I'm no. delete. No, no, no. Shh. Hang Forty. On. But I didn't give anything away. No, we we're are not. We're muting that part of the audio. All right, and we're back. Don't don't even delete it because leave it leave it on camera. Continue. Yeah. <laughs> just mute that part it of the audio. It just hit me right there. If I'm you're so wondering sorry. why that got muted, she just gave a spoiler. I don't want her to give out. 
Correct. That, yeah. I'm sorry. It just hit it's me. It's all right. It's okay because I was trying not to do the same thing. Like This I just, movie is just so freaking so good. good. I, know. I know. I know. Well, and... Ryan, and, you have to see this movie. And right, unlike Eternals, they introduced every character in the perfect amount of time all right, well, in the perfect first of all, way. Don't ever compare it to Eternals. <laughs> that movie was awful. I was trying not to say that when we reviewed it. It was terrible. I hated it. But they did. Like, because there's it. so many characters in this, like, plot. It. And you have to introduce all these characters and where they come from in the background. And they did but it they so did it swiftly. Correctly. Correct. Like, everything everything about this movie was perfect. I'm not even kidding when I that's say it's the, now in my top ten. That is my reference for Smoke and Aces. I mean, this movie is violent. Very, very gory. Guys. But um, that was the thing that I liked. Mm-hmm. is how they introduce the characters because they set them up they gave you backstory and then they went this is who this is yeah and it was it was always these like freeze frame and then hard cut to a background story and then you got back to the yeah. to what was happening and it's such a beautiful way to make a movie that's such a because it keeps you so invested in like okay now i like these guys oh, yeah. okay Lemon and Tangerine. All right, I'm in on you too now. You know. Oh, that was so perfect how they did that Ugh. at the very end. So good it, watching uh, this movie. There were some twists. We're not going to give them away, but there was there was a lot some of celebrity cameos. A lot of cameos movie. and a lot of, especially if you know who's directing, then like some of the cameos make even more sense. Like uh, the Hornet. I'll say <laughs> it that also, way. Yep. Yep. It's also one yep. of those things where you're like, so you're like, if you want to concentrate on the movie, because everything comes back full circle, every phrase, everything gets filled in and you don't have to think too hard about it. You're like, oh, oh, that there, there. Yes. Perfect. It's, it and, all falls into place perfectly. And, and the, the cherry on top was like, they rolled credits and then they're like 10 minutes earlier yes! and they showed like how that- the the end of the movie actually happened and you're like god that was that was awesome and i and i had thought about that i was like that had to be that had and, to be something and then it came back and i'm like okay so i was right but yep. yes it's perfect it's a really it's a well written well directed well acted it's funny it moves there's never a slow moment there's not Again, a moment where you're like you're like oh that didn't need to be there like if you if you said hey how do you shave five minutes off this film i couldn't i no. couldn't i couldn't do it i wouldn't anywhere. think there'd be a slow moment in a movie titled bullet train for the record. There's but. always a slow moment when people have to put in the plot or a love story or whatever. There was none of that. It cost ninety million to make this movie. I can Thirty point one million was the opening weekend box office. It should surpass that. It's at but sixty-three it, million. If you encounter inter- international, international, international right as now. well. Um the thing is, I think some of the Rotten Tomatoes critiques are are hurting what could be a possibility of a well a really screw good rotten tomatoes and then yes i'm saying that Dude, because people rotten, do not choose to go to movies based on rotten tomatoes i think you're i think you'd be surprised to know how many people are like nah maybe i'll pass on that film people not choose anymore. because they listen to the quad with chris young <laughs> <laughs> yes they do that's why I, fandango but, support us we'll we can give us some some gift cards fandango to go. monster core we're here um, Rockstar, anyone Bang. i I, I really want a bullet train too. I, do, I want something along these lines. Maybe not exactly that, but I want a follow up of this style and these characters and that I want something else. I want more. I would like to see what happens with Brad Pitt's character. I yes. just want, I just want more of him, but also I kind of don't because this movie you don't is perfect. Want it to be ruined. This movie is perfect. Right. But also it, they can easily take that character and make something just as amazing for Maybe. a second one. Maybe. Maybe. If they do everything right. Maybe. Deadpool 2 was great. Why are you so deep into something right now, Chris? I know. I'm sorry. I've, I've like faded from the podcast. Yes. If you're watching this, this is the first time you've ever seen me on my phone this this much. It's for the hot take, and I'm actually starting to get angry. <laughs> I'm actually physically getting angry about what I'm going to say about the hot take, and there's a very good reason for it. So That, my friends, is what we call a tease in the business. So yeah. stick around for the yeah. hot take coming up on the quad with Chris <laughs> Young. That's just a few anywhere. segments away. I'm, I'm so angry right now, and, and for good reason. And we're going to get to Chris's anger coming up. In the hot take here in just a little bit on the quad with Chris Young. So but the movie first, for next week. Yeah, what is the movie for next week? What are we doing? Unrelated. Did you see the trailer for John Wick 4? Oh. Yeah. Mar- March, March, March of next year. Let's oh, mark so it down. Wait, what? March I, of next year? I'm oh, not yeah. allowed to die before we get to March yeah, we, of next year. We have, I have to stay I alive. I'll put you in a medicated bubble, my Wait, guy. We are both going to be in a bubble. <laughs> Nobody's going to die. 
I'll stop playing basketball. Oh, I won't man. stop playing basketball. Yeah. I'll that's... tear that ACL. Let's go. Oh. Holy crap. Oh, I why would you? So no. Excited. Don't say that. <laughs> Her knee started throbbing yeah, the second I said it. Yeah, just immediately when you said that, she's like, oh, I have zero ACLs left. I don't even have a good knee anymore. Oh, no. My knee. Just because it's you broken. brought it up, maybe we should all watch the train wreck Woodstock 99. It's really awesome, and like, it's an easy watch cool. on Netflix. I'm down with that. Yeah. Wait, it's, what movie? The, the Woodstock. The train wreck Woodstock it's called the train 99 wreck. on Netflix. It's called yeah. train, train wreck Woodstock 99. Oh, I, okay. It's, it's awesome. <laughs> so like, we're not going to watch Thomas and all... <laughs> Sorry, when you're talking about a train wreck, I'm like, all I can think about is train the plot. wreck Woodstock '99. Yes. Correct, train wreck Woodstock '99. I do like that when on this TVGuide.com it says, "Is it good?" and the question it asked is, "Is Fred Durst a meathead?" <laughs> there's a lot of really interesting <laughs> stuff. I, I can't wait to talk about it because there's some there's some choices, and some of it we're going to save it. I don't want to. I don't want right, to get good. going. I'm excited. I don't want to get going. Woodstock. Let's this go is going to be Take a long podcast back. today, y'all. We're sorry. It's Stay all good. No, more. don't be sorry. It is going to be long. They're here for it. Here we are. They love this. You know what the beginning of August represents, right? Do you know what we just surpassed, ladies and gentlemen? The last weekend without football? Yes! <laughs> Let's yes! go. Let's that's the, that's a great segue. Every that's a great segue. Weekend. Let's do it. Spark. Oh, man. What a segue. Nice you, job, Josh. You set it up. Oh, I knock it down. Yes. Let's go. Uh, Welcome to your the all NFL preview on the quad with Chris Young. <laughs> pew, 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 pew. We are going to dig into both the AFC and the NFC. We're going to do some preseason picks pew, of pew, who's going to win all the divisions. We're going to maybe make some Super Bowl bets. We might even look up for some uh, some very large parlays for divisional bet pew, winners pew, like pew, we did pew, last pew, year. We are. So let us begin. I will say. There are some things that I look at when we do, when we're forecasting for the future for the NFL. And one, and there's three things in particular. Number one, how many players are on their second year? Because the first year is scary. You're a rookie. You're trying to figure it out. You're trying to figure out the pace of things, your teams, whatever. So what notable players are in their second year? Also, what notable players are in a contract year? Mm. People like to get paid. They're a little mm -hmm. more incentivized mm -hmm. to play well. <laughs> what players just got a brand new contract and probably won't play this year? Also those. And then, <laughs> and then thirdly, uh, quarterbacks, <laughs> <said it>. quarterbacks <laughs> on a new team. Because, Ooh, yes. because we, like, we, we like see that. a lot. Yes. And unfortunately, we haven't done our fantasy draft yet, so some of these things I feel like I'm giving away like how I pick players for our fantasy stuff. But... We will begin. Do you want to start AFC, NFC? Let's do AFC first. Yeah. I figure uh, we'll go each division. Quick 30 seconds from each of us on your pick and why you're picking it. Let's start with the AFC North. Ryan. In the AFC North, the teams you have are the Ravens, the Bengals, the Browns, and the Pittsburgh Steelers. That is your AFC North division. The betting favorites right now, according to FanDuel Sportsbook, is the Baltimore Ravens at plus 160. Keep in mind, the Cincinnati Bengals are the reigning <laughs> Wait, AFC. Excuse me? Yep. The Cincinnati what? Bengals are the reigning AFC champions. They are plus 180. My division winner, because of what you brought up specifically in this in terms of Contract improvement years is, contract year. is the Baltimore Ravens. I think Lamar Jackson is going to have yet another MVP season for the Baltimore Ravens this year. I think they are set up well to compete with the Bengals in the division. That is my division winner this year, the Baltimore Ravens. Piggybacking that, I also am picking the Baltimore Ravens. Ooh. I feel like the last year was the year for hell from the from hell Whoa. for them. For year hell, for hell, last year, year for hell, year for hell. Ah, last, it was it was injury <laughs> after injury after injury, and because Lamar, especially on the heels of the Kyler Murray ridiculous contract that I don't think is actually worth the money, but that's a whole separate thing. We'll get there. Uh, I think Lamar will be playing at a extremely high caliber. I think that division is very winnable. Also, Joe Burrow is still hurt in camp and taking limited practice, and I think that maybe the bug might hit the Bengals this year. So All right. I'm picking the Ravens. Here's my deal. Since well, I've Super been... Bowl, Super Bowl slump? I've had my, my head buried in my phone looking at this thing that I'm very angry about because I just realized it as we're on the podcast. Um, I, I think you're wrong. I get it, Super Bowl slump. That means you might not make it back, but... 
I'm sorry that the Bengals are the most talented team in that division. In year two of Jamar Chase. Name me, yeah, name me a wide receiver on the Baltimore Ravens. Exactly. Mm-hmm. This is my point. They're like, that guy can't throw. Well, he's got no one to throw to. Well, it's, he I might mean, have he's rookies. Got the, he's got one of the best tight ends in all of football. Oh, Mark okay. Andrews is, yeah, but they're going to double him. The guy has had a, like 100 catches, I think, three years yeah, in but a row. Like he's, again, he's man, when you have one weapon that we know of, now, I'm not saying that 100%. Obviously, I could be wrong. They have Rashad Bateman. <laughs> okay. Devin Duvernay All right. <laughs> and James it. Prochet the Stop second. Stop it. Stop it. And J.K. Stop Dobbins it. in the slot. Stop it. Yes. And Gus uh, Edwards. And by the way, those guys are more talented at football than I have ever thought of being. <laughs> I'm not laughing at that. I'm just saying when you don't have a Jamar Chase to defend, it makes that much different. And also, who's the tight end? Mark Andrews. What year is he in? A contract. Contract here. How old is he? 32. Contract yeah, man. year, baby. I, I'm just saying, I get it that they're both in contract years. I think it's the Bengals. I do think, and here's the other thing, I do think the Ravens go out and add, try and add somebody here I, in training camp. Regardless. You know, who was hurt, you know who was hurt last year? Dak Prescott in training camp. That's true. Guess who won the division? Well, I wouldn't be very proud of that, that division, <laughs> for the record. I still would. Won. Still won. Hey, the you know what? Win. That's, that's, that's the, the worst hey. division in football. But. Is it? Is it the worst division it's, in football? Everybody always brings up the NFC least. It's a really least. bad division. Is it? AFC South is pretty is bad. Is it? <laughs> the, it? Everybody always jokes around because it's constantly on TV because people love those teams. We're going to get, I mean. No, 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 no. Was it Listen, last year or the year before that everybody was right. under 500? Hey, hang on. Mute him. Listen to me. Everybody always talks about it's NFC least, NFC least, NFC least. Go look at the last 10 years of football. How many Super Bowl wins are in the NFC East? Do I get to pick my team now? Yes, yes you do. Sorry, yes. I'm just like angry about that because everybody it. always brings it up and they always poop all over the Cowboys because they hate them. I get it. We haven't won in a long time, but it's like we're most, playing against teams that end up winning the Super Bowl. And most teams haven't won in a long time. I know. Like this is not... When like, was the last time the Browns won? When's the oh last time boy. the Dolphins won? Hey! That was uncalled for. No, it's not. No, it's not. It's not. Won what? You might own the Patriots, <laughs> but you haven't schedule. owned a Super Bowl in forever. <laughs> we won the division in 2008. Congratulations. <laughs> in 2008? I believe Pennington, you, baby. I believe you tied for the win for that the division in 2008. 14 years ago, Ryan. We won the division. I think All you right, t- it was ahead, a tie. Matt funny. Castle was the quarterback no. of the Patriots that year. Uh huh. Go ahead. Go ahead. I'm sorry. That was I just did that, that. You wanted to me. Ravens, Browns, Bengals, or Steelers. Who are you going with? Bengals. I I was an advocate for them last year because we all had the, they had they had the same problem as the Bears. The poor quarterback, poor guy. But they even they 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 surpassed that problem and still made it to the Super Bowl. They did not win the Super Bowl, and I didn't think they would win in the Super Bowl. But in that division, they like they're, like y'all have already argued about they are the only ones with weapons that could get anywhere. Because let's be real. No, no, no. Let's be real because um, I'm sorry. How's uh, how's how the Steelers going to do with Mitch Trubisky? Look, I, I understand <laughs> the Trubisky truthers. Okay, just, just so we're clear, though, Najee Harris is awesome. Deontay Johnson is awesome. That team is actually, like, loaded. It's a matter of can Mitch make throws. And maybe was that the Bears' fault? I don't know. We'll see. They already booed him off the practice field. It's okay. Lots of things happen on practice fields that don't matter. Like Tua throwing to Tyreek. Moving on. All right, next, All right. next one. AFC. I just, I just don't want my division. Like, you know what? No, let's go NFC East. Because I just don't want my division to get pooped on. Well, I was going right? to go all AFC and then make picks, nope, but no, nope, right. no, nope. I changed my mind. I am totally skewing this because Ryan, you say this is the worst division in football, but again, in how 2020, many, it was the fourth worst many? win percentage of any division. A win percentage in NFL my history. Ass. Win, win percentage, percentage my ass. You NFL, have one bad team skew that whole number. All bad I teams. know it was all. Everybody bad was teams? under 500 that year in 2020. No, they in 2020. Good lord, recency bias. That's not recent. That's not recent. That, That's not last that year. Everyone was what happened on, last year, Ryan? The Cowboys won the division and won't win it again this year. What was it? What was their record? 
I don't remember. Ten wins? Do they have ten wins? Why don't you pull it up? All right. Let's pull it up from last year. Because it wasn't 500. Nine and eight. Ooh, ew. They were nine and eight last year? Look Ooh. it up. Just, I'm just don't ew. Have you seen y'all your don't team? Remember. The Dolphins were nine and eight last year, too. The Dolphins were terrible. Last year, you oh, feasted on record. you feasted on a bunch of bad teams at the end of your. You play season. Jacksonville Actually, every like year, twelve and five. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, there you go. Now we know Ryan doesn't pay attention to my division in football. Nah, Ryan, who does this for a living, does not pay attention to the <laughs> NFC right. East Outside in football. All right, all right, holy all right. crap! Decorum, decorum. All right, NFC East. Go ahead, yes. Ryan. Okay. with your pick. Can I give the odds? Sure. Okay. It's Dallas. The odds for the NFC East division winner. Dallas sure it, plus it, 125 Dallas. Is, the, is the odds maker on uh, t- the favorite to win. I get Eagles it. That's my second. team. It's Dallas. Commanders plus 500, and the Giants are plus 700 <laughs> Commanders. to win that division. All right, go I ahead. I don't even recognize them It's going to be a two-team race between the, the Eagles, Eagles and the Cowboys, and the Cowboys like it year. always is normally. Except for the years that the Giants somehow win the Super Bowl, which tends to happen which, like every again, 10 years. Every 10 <laughs> years? No, they won it twice within 10 years. Twice and, and twice since they won the, the Super Bowl twice in ten years, Ryan. Yeah, I know. Sooner you than are Dolphins. a sports they stopped, guy. They what the, the, they hell the Patriots is wrong from being with you? undefeated? I remember that. All right, you, I take pick? the Dallas Cowboys to win. Great. Sounds good. Sweet, Chris. Go. I already said Dallas. Dallas, Ryan. He's going to go Eagles just to be contrarian. Dallas lost Amari Cooper. They lost Randy Gregory. Lyle Collins. And you've lost your mind. <laughs> we we Moving haven't on. had Randall Gregory or Lyle Collins <laughs> for a make bunch a pick, of games. Please. Can you make a pick? It's the Eagles that are going to win the division. Okay. I also have the Eagles winning the division. Oh! All right. Oh! Cool. Oh! Only because, oh. but I do think Michael Gallup will have a great year this year because. Oh, C- sure. CD- no, 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 no. Don't, don't, don't backdoor this. I'm not backdooring. I'm, I'm just, Stop I'm it. saying CeeDee Lamb has to be extraordinary. Where do you want to go next? Because now we're all over the place. I know. AFC East. Ryan. The odds in the AFC East. The Buffalo Bills are a heavy you don't favorite have to, give to win the, the odds division. Every time. Yes, you do. We're just yes, giving our minus two twenty. Yes, the Dolphins do. are second favorite in the division at plus four fifty, according to FanDuel. The Patriots are plus five hundred, and the Jets are plus twenty four hundred. Holy Go. crap! So your Dolphins, right? By the way, what a flyer! You your Dolphins, the right? The Dolphins are going to win that division. It's the Bills. It's, it's the Bills. Bills. It's one hundred percent the Bills. <laughs> it's not even close. I can't wait to whatever, whatever. We already outfit, made a bet on it. We made a bet on it last week. You have this. Hey, look, the Bills are going to have, again, one of those little slumps that we saw, right? We talked about it's going to happen with the Bengals. I think it's going to happen with the Bills this year as well. I think the Dolphins... Why would the Bills have a slump? I think the, the Dolphins... Bills have the, Dolph- s- the Bills have won it three years in a row, the AFCs. They've won, they've won the division three years in a row. And after last year, the amount of revenge that they yeah, are Yeah, they are coming out angry. We'll see how the revenge tour goes. I think... The Miami Dolphins are going to surprise everyone and win the division. The Miami Dolphins are going to surprise everyone and win four games <laughs> the whole year. All right. AFC, the, the murder division, the AFC West. What are our odds and what is your pick? The AFC West division. Kansas City Chiefs are the favorites coming in at plus 155, followed by the LA Chargers, the Denver Broncos, and the Las Vegas Raiders. Bear, you go first. I'm going to say... Probably what no one thinks. Um, I'm going to go with the Raiders. It's Ooh. Raiders. It's Raiders. <clears throat> wow. The Chargers have so much hype, and they have shown absolutely nothing. They cannot I close hate, games. I hate that everyone loves Justin Herbert. I don't. I, that's great, not great, true. Great hate, at fantasy. Hate, great at fantasy. Hate is a strong word. Justin Herbert is an actual person. <laughs> <laughs> he has feelings it, in a family. Is, he has feelings in a family and people that love him. And I don't mean to be rude. Yeah, but he looks way worse. I'm than sorry. Longer. Everybody keeps talking about how great he is. He hasn't done it yet. He hasn't done anything yet. When you do it, when you finally do it, when you get there, awesome. It's like when somebody comes out as a new musician and everybody's like, they're going to be a superstar. And I'm like, first there's, of all, there's like three of those. Yep. I've said this before on this podcast. Like that is not. I am not a superstar. <laughs> it is not. That is country such a music small, superstar. Exactly. Chris that is yeah. such a no. Absolutely not. That is such a small Rarified number of air. people. You have to be Tom Brady to be a superstar in the league, and they keep talking about how great Justin Herbert is, and that's awesome. But I need to see it occur. And honestly, I think a big part of it, and this is not his fault, is that they have no, like, 
home advantage at all. Oh, no. No, you go to Los Angeles, it's 60% the opposite team every yeah. single time. Yeah. Well, the Raiders now have a power team when it comes to Derek well, Carr and they all, Adams. Again, all of the AFC West people, has a power team right forget, now. Yeah, oh, yes, that's true. That division, by the way, got it, got, is the from the offseason, won the offseason more than any other division. People keep forgetting... They played in college together. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they were that's roommates. what I'm saying. It's a power. It's a power couple. I didn't I guess know I that. Say. <laughs> that was a power, power couple. couple. <laughs> gonna, we're gonna something. Photoshop them together in like a wedding photo, <laughs> like <laughs> stepbrother style. Like that's that's the that's the Good. soul thing. This pains me beyond oh, belief. Oh, oh no! no! Oh no! This pains me oh, beyond belief. Oh no! Life. This reminds me of when Peyton Manning went to the Denver Broncos, but I think that the Denver Broncos are going to win the oh, AFC West. Oh my I think God. I think, they're, I think the AFC West is going to be like four teams that are nine and eight, and it's going to be all divisional stuff that's oh, going to decide man. it. But I do believe that a I, I can re- see it. rejuvenated Russell Wilson with that defense, with those weapons, it makes sense. He's not going to pull a Matt Stafford. He's oh, not. Man. He's wow. not going to do it. He, man. He's he, not going to do it. He had already it. proved I, that he can do it more than Matt Stafford ever did. Well, that no, that's no, not true. No. Yeah, he he won a Super Bowl before, it, it, but not on a brand new team. Wait, time out. <laughs> you cannot <laughs> say what you just said. Yeah, I can. Dude, are you are you literally talking about Matt Stafford, who was relegated to the worst team in the league for his entire career, went to a new team, and first season won the Super Bowl? Yeah. That that is not Russell Wilson. Russell, Russell Wilson, Wilson came into the Legion of Boom, the best defense. I get it, but weapons. But he also replaced a just then signed Matt Hasselbeck, who was going to be the Matt, star. Of, I'm look. I get it. Matt I get Hasselbeck, it. stop I it. I get it. The dude was a third stringer that won the starting job and proved to be a great quarterback for a while, and now he's had a terrible team, just like Matt Stafford did, and now he is in a new system where he gets to call the shots and where they have been struggling for quarterback play for years. Can you name the last, I don't know, four quarterbacks to the Denver Broncos? Trevor Simeon, Drew Locke, no, 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 no. Paxton Lynch. Like, I are think we serious? I told you before the season they were going to be my pick, and, and they would have been if Devontae Adams did not go to the Raiders. Because as mid as their defense is we all know it's all about offense in the league they they defer to offense anymore in the nfl it's not defense first and holy crap that offense was already great Hmm? and they gave him arguably one of the best wide receivers in the league absolutely ryan I, I didn't realize we're going to go this long today, guys. It's Sorry. okay. It's I, just, liked, I like this. I like, dude, I'm just fired up now. Go For ahead. For six straight years, the Kansas City Chiefs have won this division. They have absolutely dominated the AFC Just West. take your pick. Are you going KC? I'm going to do what Josh wasn't bold enough to do, which is stick with the team that's oh, won six my. consecutive years. And here's, <laughs> and here's one of the reasons why that's I say igno- that. That's an ignorant <laughs> pick. But here's right. one of the reasons why I say that. Not only do they have the best quarterback in football, Yes, they lost Tyreek Hill. Oh. But you know who they brought in? A little-known wide receiver from Green Bay named Marquez valdez Scantlin. <laughs> I like how you're like, yeah, they lost Tyreek Hill, yet you're going to use that same thing to prop up the Dolphins in a second. The Kansas City Chiefs not only he are going is, to... That's why he hesitated. Not right, only are on. going to win the division... They're going to win 14 games this year. <laughs> oh, my God. No, you know, no, no. I will bet you... I will be- Ten thousand dollars right now that they do not win fourteen games. Not doing that. Yeah. Oh 14, my god. No way. Fourteen. They haven't won fourteen what? in like seven years. These okay. are bold all predictions. Right. All right. All right. all right. Continue. All right. So all right. that is the that's AFC the West. West. AFC, we've AFC done South. Three <laughs> AFC South. The no. We're, AFC we're, South. We're okay. According to FanDuel Sportsbook, the favorite to win the division is the Tennessee Titans. Indianapolis Colts. At minus 115. The Titans are plus 160. Oh, my God. Why would they make the Colts the favorite? Followed by the Jaguars and the Houston Texans. Anybody taking the Texans for a flyer? No. <laughs> no. Jaguars? No. No. Okay. Who is winning this division? Titans. Titans. Colts. Oh, no. I like new quarterback, new situation. And Dude, honestly, Matt Ryan, they you, keep did losing you watch the Jaguars. Him last year? <laughs> the Colts almost made the playoffs. With Carson Wentz, just so we're clear. I get it. I get it. Jonathan Taylor is still going to run for a whole bunch. Jonathan Taylor is a year older. 
Mm-hmm. Every year you are older as a running back, you have no idea what the wear and tear is going to be on that guy. It, that is the focal point of their offense. Isn't that the same point for the Titans? Yes. No. Yeah. Derrick Henry got hurt. Are we sure Derrick Henry is going to be okay? But the Colts can't keep a quarterback because they can't figure it out. Well, Matt Ryan is Matt how Ryan's old? good. How old is and Matt he Ryan? He really has never had a good run game in Atlanta. We hey all guys. saw what happened in the oh, Super Bowl what? against the no, Patriots. No, stop that. You stop that right name, now. Name me the best running back that Matt Ryan has had in Atlanta. Well, Cordell first, Patterson. Yeah, I was going to say. <laughs> no, that's a wide receiver. Cordero. He right. was a running back. He was a running you back just last gave me year. the point. You just, you last just year, made that. my point for me. No, no. He actually, they, they had like multiple tandems of running backs. They they had like bruising running backs. But not Jonathan backs. Taylor. Todd Gurley last well, season. Okay. Yeah, I get it. They didn't have Jonathan Taylor. But is Jonathan Taylor going to do what he did last season? I don't, I don't know. But because now people know that that's. Well, and Matt Ryan on. can throw. And, I mean, they knew that last year, but you and I both know this. And, well, I mean, all of us know this. People scheme against that stuff. They do, but that means play action will actually keep. This is the thing, right? All right, who are their wide receivers? Uh, Michael Pittman and then. Uh, I think T.Y. Hilton is still there. Yeah, I think he's, <laughs> he's still running He'll around. The corpse of T.Y. Hilton, Hilton is still there. injured half the season. The ghost of T.Y. Hilton is still <laughs> He's still running. Martin I'm Harrison. Sorry. I don't know. I don't know who's still there. They're still there. They're don't still pick there. him for your fantasy team. And I'm sorry because I've got friends that are Colts fans, but like that, that that's not. So we, come on, okay, you've so got to have the pieces. Here, here's what to. I can tell you from watching the Chiefs. All right, the Alex Smith Chiefs, because Alex Smith could not throw downfield, corners got to come in. They got to overplay the run. Everything was a lot more clogged. The second Patrick Mahomes stepped in there, it was the exact same team. It was just a different quarterback. And everything had more space and everything opened up. So right. I'm not saying it's going to be to that level, but I do think Matt Ryan gives you a competitive advantage over Carson Wentz let last me, year. Let me tell you why I feel the way that I do. And it's because being a Cowboys fan, I saw what happened with Ezekiel Elliott. He had two years where that line was healthy, he was healthy, and it was unstoppable, right? They still they still didn't win him a Super Bowl. But, but it was great. But it was great, and it it allowed the play action and all that stuff, and you could sell on that. Then what happened? People started getting hurt, Mm -hmm. which occurs when you run that much because your line is constantly going forward. And falling and getting Instead of stepping back and trying to block, and your running back is constantly getting hit, and he does. He He does. He, he gets hit because everybody tries to key on him. At some point, that you get diminishing returns from that. No question. So you both picked the Colts. No, Titans. No, Titans. 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 You picked the Colts. Colts. I picked the Colts. Colts got Matt Ryan. They got Ngakwe, who's incredible on defense. Yes. Gilmore was the, the 2019 Defensive Player of the Year. All those added in free agency. <laughs> Wait, say that again? 2019 Defensive Player of the That's Year. That's three years ago, man. That's okay. You have to remember this. That's if a everybody lot of wear forgets, and tear on defense three years. That's three okay. Years. I'm telling you, the Colts are going to run away with this division. I think Ryan Tannehill takes another step back because that's what Tannehill always does. You I say think that they're going to run away because you're wearing a Dolphins hat. <laughs> Just you're telling mad. you, Colts. Colts are going to win the division. All right, moving All right. on. NFC North. Ooh, this is going to be a fun division. Oh, let me talk All right, so the NFC the North, the betting favorites are <laughs> the Green Bay Packers at minus 170, followed by the Minnesota Vikings, the Detroit Lions, ahead of the Chicago Bears. The Lions I'm- are ahead of the Bears? Oh, my. Wait, what? Wait. <laughs> <Yep>. Hang on. <laughs> what? The Detroit Lions are plus 850. <laughs> The Bears are plus 950. Oh, Name no. Name a player on my freaking team right now. Nobody. They are Justin going Fields, to be. That's well, Neil, but he just got hurt. <laughs> and who knows what happens. Okay. Uh, you know who's going to win this division? The Vikings. Ooh. Hot take. Hot take. The Chris? Vikings are going to win this division. I'm telling you, the Packers are going to 100% fall apart after everything that's been going on. And now Aaron Rodgers, after his fight of not wanting to be there, and then now he loses his star wide receiver. They're, they've lost everybody at this point. Go, like Pack, go. Go, Pack, go. Yeah. I, hate, I hate even saying that. But the Vikings Cowboys had fan. a good season last year. They weren't they bad. Did. They, they are a very pass-happy offense, and I think that's what gets them into trouble because they can't run the football. Well, can we all agree that Who's the Bears the might back? have the have a, 
the Vikings. Who's their running Cook. back? Dalvin Cook. Yeah, Dalvin Cook is yeah. when healthy, one of the best running backs. When ever. healthy, that's the problem. Mm-hmm. And they play when it gets cold, and normally he gets hurt before the end of the season. And it's great if you can pass the football downfield, but once it gets cold and starts snowing and you're playing in Minnesota and Green Bay in your division games at the end of the year, you're screwed. It's tough for me to wrap my mind around that I'm about to pick Kirk Cousins over, oh, God. No! over Aaron oh, Rodgers, but I do think the Green Bay Packers take a step back, and I am picking the Minnesota Vikings to win that division. Thank right. you. Glad for I mean, by the way, this one I, I think is splitting hairs. I get it. This one's up in the air for sure. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I don't tend to think so. I think this is going to be a year where the Green Bay Packers yet again win this division. Yes, they lost Devontae Adams. I understand that. But their defense, if you go back and watch their defense last year, they were one of the best defensive teams in football. And Rashawn Gary, the former number one overall recruit, that guy took a huge step forward. They have a huge pass rusher now that has emerged as one of the best in the league. Packers are going to win this division. And it's not even going to be close. Who's wide receiver one? Lazard? Yep, Alan Lazard, I think, is wide receiver one. Actually, when... He got hurt for a little bit, but when he was healthy, he was great. He was great. So. It's, the Packers are not going to do it this year. I mean, I'm who has Aaron Rodgers won with in the past? Hold on. Are you picking the Packers? <laughs> He's got he a good point. He's got a good point. The same guy that says Donald Aaron Rodgers is washed up last year? First off, Donald Driver was cold. <laughs> Second, Donald Driver was cold. Um that's what, that's the last. All I'm saying is Devonte Adams took up like 26 percent of the offense. I think I saw that stat. That's a lot. That's you're losing okay. a large chunk. Can I can I ask you a hypothetical? Because I think Devonte Adams is that good. Before Devonte Adams broke out, who did he have to throw to? That was the entire was, narrative of yeah, it was Aaron Rodgers. The previous just, year of Aaron Rodgers Aaron going. Rogers. Wait, wait, wait. That was the entire narrative of Aaron Rodgers going. I don't have anybody to throw to. Mm-hmm. You're not giving me any weapons. Right. And he still got it done. You are forgetting that an old friend is back there with Aaron Rodgers. Randall Cobb. An old friend. <laughs> old. So old. 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 And then you're going to... Randall what? Cobb. Sammy like, Watkins. That's like, like Sammy Watkins. out there a tight end. Uh, this is like <laughs> Tom Brady idea. back in the day when he'd bring in the old guard and make him a number one Aaron wide Rogers receiver. Aaron Rodgers' nose is getting too high. I just... Mm-mm. And his, he's been doing and his that wife for his getting entire too low, you know. <laughs> All right, moving on, moving on. NFC South. All right, the NFC South division. The favorites by a heavy and wide margin are your Tampa Bay Buccaneers at minus 270, the New Orleans Saints, Carolina Panthers, and the Atlanta Falcons. Follow them up. Fellas, who's winning the division? And lady, who's winning the division? Bucks. I think it's the Bucks. I, I want to go Saints, but I just There's too much I can't new. trust them. I think no Gronk. I think uh, some hurt wide receivers. Godwin's coming back, though. Yeah, Godwin's yeah, coming back. back. I know. But, like, we're putting a lot of faith in Russell Gage. I, <laughs> look, dude, we're putting a lot of faith in Tom Brady. Let's putting, be honest. And I know. I know. But this team has owned the Bucks for the last two years, and I'm picking the New Orleans Saints to win this division. Oof, I think okay. that they have loaded up, and I think that with a healthy Michael Thomas finally back, finally no, back. No, he's not. He no, he's back. not. They he's were back. doing 11-on-11 11 11 drills. He he's, is not back. We have not seen him on the field. He's back. I think the Saints are going to win the division. If my, You know what? I, I'll do this caveat. I'm still calling Bucks, but if Michael Thomas actually comes back and plays... I would go Saints. Yep, but I just don't. I don't trust him. He's and, been gone James for is two be, years, and Jameis is going to be healthy this season. I well, Jameis will also Jameis. Yes, he will. <laughs> She's not wrong. Not, not after the LASIK. <laughs> <laughs> I think the second team in the division will not be the New Orleans Saints. I think it's going to be Baker Mayfield and the Carolina Panthers, who are the second best division or uh, Get team out of in that here. division. That's who you're going to pick at the win. We don't no, even know. No, if he's the winner the is going to be the Tampa Bay Buccaneers because Tom Brady changed everything. Him coming back this year absolutely changed. By the way, they are. Of any division favorite, they are the heaviest favorite to win their division. Here's the thing. Have you looked up Todd Bowles as a head coach? And his, I have. His, I his have. record? I have. But it's not just all Bowles. It's not like Bowles of the Jets. It's Bowles with Byron Leftwich, who's been under the tutelage of B.A. the entire time he was there in Tampa Bay. Like I actually really think this Tampa offense can be good, even without Gronk. By the way, you're dismissing the fact that they do have, um, why am I forgetting, Cameron Bright, who mm-hmm. is... Very reliable in the red zone. And before Gronk got there, was Tom Brady's favorite red zone target. Sure. Like, so I, I definitely think that this team is going to still win the division. But Carolina, watch out for them. Baker, he's got the goods. Let's All right, let's do the last ones quick. A- NFC West. 
The NFC West, your favorite to win is the Los Angeles Rams at plus 125, followed by the Niners, Cardinals, and Seattle Seahawks. Yeah, I'm going with Rams. Rams. Also Rams. Dude, don't, don't don't try to do it for the, the pod. Just say Rams because the, the Niners have Trey Lance. Rams. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, real quick, Super Bowl predictions. Uh, my, that, are I, we done? We yeah, are that, that's, all, that's okay. all the divisions. Um, that's interesting. I, I I feel like my my opinion might change because we are we have a lot to see in the next month of what may change, and there's already people. And we may trying. revisit this. We're going to have to sure. revisit this, but right now I'm going Buffalo Bills. Wow. Against, are you doing a Super Bowl pick? Are you doing uh, a? Well, yeah, but against who? And who in the in the NFC? Shit. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think that far ahead. Sorry. Hold on. One fifteen fifty three. No, we're leaving it. <laughs> we're, we're leaving it. Leave it. Leave it. <laughs> oh God. I don't. See, I, I really. I have such a hard time. Just. Well, I'll 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 buy you some time. <clears throat> I also think it will be the Bills, and it will be the Bills against the Rams. I think it'll be Bills. Oh, Rams. you think another one? Wow, I really? think the Rams. I think the Rams can can figure out a way to get back. I think uh, Stafford year two in that system, a little bit more comfortable. I also think I like some of their offseason pickups. I like Allen Robinson as the second wide receiver. I think that he's going to have a great season because I think everyone's going to double up on Cooper Cup. So, yes. But you know I, what, I, have the Bills, I have the Bills winning. Them. So I'm going to... As of right now, I'm going to follow my pick last year was the Rams and the Bills in the Super Bowl, and I picked the Bills to win the Super Bowl. So I'm going to follow that again. Exactly. Bills right and now. Rams. Bills, Bills Rams, Bills win. Ryan? Chiefs and Packers in the Super Bowl. <laughs> no way. And your There's not a chance. Chiefs aren't even going to make your the playoffs. Your 2023 Super Bowl champion will be the Green Bay Packers and Aaron Rodgers, who in his final swan song in Green Bay, Wins them yet another championship. He's under the two plus one. Swan song. <laughs> he not wants as, not his last year. He wants out of there. <laughs> not his last year. He wants out of there. He signed an extension. He wants that. Letter. All right, I'm. I'm gonna. I'm gonna be the weird one. You're going Cowboys, aren't you? No. You're going Bills, aren't you? No, I do think the Cowboys win a playoff game this year. I do. No. No, that's no. huge. My predictions what? were pretty right, on point. Guy last wearing year, dolphin's hat. Shut up. We haven't won a playoff game since 2000. Yeah, so. I know. <laughs> that's my point. Um, I, I think they win a playoff game this year, at least one. I would love to see them in the Super Bowl. If they go to the Super Bowl, you will never see someone more nervous than me. Do you want the odds, by the way, for Super Bowl? Just just, just so for you all Cowboys? know. For the Cowboys? No, period. Okay, The outright sure. Super Bowl odds. The, the Bills are the favorite at plus 650, followed by the Bucks, Chiefs, Rams, Packers, and Chargers. See, here's where I think you guys are wrong. I think the Bengals make it back. I think they're the first team to do it where they lose and don't have the Super Bowl hangover. And they return. And win it? Oh. I'm calling it. Wow. All right. Who do they play? That one's harder. So in that in that division, who are the who are the favorites? In uh, the on that bu- side, Bucks, Rams, Packers. I think it's the Bucks. Ooh. I think the Bucks go back with Brady trying to win it one more time, and Joe Burrow wins the Super Bowl. The new guard beats the old. I'm I'm calling it right now, Cincy fans. Boomer size. We'll revisit this I, after. Yeah, we'll revisit. We'll revisit, and we gotta go. We we've been. What's, what's yours? It's been an hour and a half. What's, and what's yours, Ryan? Chiefs and Packers. Chiefs Packers, Packers win the. We'll Super revisit Bowl. in a month, and then we'll we'll do this one more time. And but. I just want to plant my flag really quick. I think that it's the the Pats are going to be a, a wild card team in the AFC. Ooh, I can see that. I can see that. Let's go to the hot take. Let's go. Hot take. Okay, I I have a huge problem i've been talking about this all podcast if you're watching on video i'm sorry that my head has been buried in my phone um i'm gonna ask you guys a question because the hot take is the worst ending to any series of all time this is the one i was already planning on going with but i was like man i don't want to like go with that because of the song 
What song plays at the end of the se- the very last episode of The Sopranos on the way out? Uh, that's a, that's a Rolling Stone song. I'm just, song? I'm going to walk outside. No, don't type it in because the, what pops up is not what it is. I'm going to walk outside and play this mm-hmm. and then come back. Mm-hmm. No, no. And that's, that's my that problem. Wasn't it. Yeah, that wasn't that's it. my problem. It's, um, again, I'm going to get up from this podcast right now. <laughs> walk outside. You guys send your picks. And just give me the short version when I come back. Because it if this is what it is, I'm now more mad because I can't pull this up for a very important reason. And I know I'm being very vague. But okay. All right. Go. All right. Haley, do you want to start? Sure. Because I'm taking a different look on this than y'all probably are. Like, you're thinking like that ending was just like horrible. Well, this was my all-time favorite show. And they picked the absolute wrong way to ever end this series. Because they didn't have to do it. I'm going with the Vampire Diaries. (laughs) I was going to say Charmed. The Uh, Vampire Diaries? Yes, because in Why? What what, what happened? Yeah. Time for some... Go ahead. They killed everybody off. That was the whole point of the season. Like, they killed Stefan. The main guy from the beginning. He didn't have to stand in that hallway and hold... Uh, Catherine to kill. He didn't have to do that. Everyone not only was bawling their eyes out, but not a single person was happy. I get it. Elena and and Damon and like they, everyone got their happy ending, but the one person that the whole show was focused on mainly was Stefan was the only one who never got the happy ending. So you're telling me that you just wanted to kill him off for dramatic effect? Yes, I bawled my freaking eyes out. But no, they did not. And I am. There's a lot of Vampire Diary fans out there. Like, there's a lot. This was a huge show for everybody. Mm-hmm. And everyone can agree with me that, that the if you were going to end that show, we all get it. Elena, like, copped out of the show and you had to do whatever you had to do. But no, you did not have to kill Stefan. He did not. There was no reason for him to stand in there and sacrifice himself for Damon. So, th- no, I'm sorry. This was the worst ending that you could have ever done for a series that ran for so long that everyone was obsessed and beloved over. Thank you for making me cry <laughs> like a little brat. <laughs> That's not the word you're going to use. Well, <clears throat> there there are a lot of candidates for this. A um, lot. Seinfeld being particularly an <laughs> atrocious one. However, mine is what you were speaking to earlier: the Sopranos. The, okay. the way the time for the way the series ends. It's been over for a long time, but it gets to a scene where there <laughs> he goes into a restaurant and he looks up and there's someone there. And then it cuts to black. And oh, by the way, it's not even like just looks up and cuts to black. Welcome it's back, like, by the way. It's like in the middle you of... You have no idea what's going on. It's like I thought my TV broke. I was yeah, like, I oh, thought, what? I was like, oh, no. Uh, uh. And it's... Re- and you it's are, the worst ending of all time. You are, you, are, you are left to assume that Tony gets killed. You are left there. However, this has been a show... For years on years of people dying and you seeing it and and you want it even even though like if you were rooting for him to die, that's fine. But we didn't get to see it. We didn't get to see any sort of closure on what happens to Tony Soprano. And that is a tragedy. And maybe that's the point because here we are all these years later still talking about how annoying this is. No, no, it was not not the the point. point. That's not the point. I'm tired of this trope. I hate when shows do this. Just give me a damn ending. Yeah. I I don't, don't care what it, it is. I don't care what it is. Don't leave it up to my mind. I get that that was a cute trope back when you were writing books. And I love some books that end that way. I do. Mm-hmm. I do when it's done right. And I love this how, was not that. And I loved how Inception, it's still spinning. Do you know right. if it falls, you know if it falls I don't over? Know. That's okay. great. Cool. See, why, great. why do I like that? But I hate this. And I hate it. The ending of The Sopranos sucks. I it, it bothers me so much to this day. It made me dislike the show. It, it <sighs> Again, try not to be angry about this. On top of all that... Ooh, sorry. I'm going to have to go back and watch the last episode of this again because I'm pretty sure. Begrudgingly? Yes. 
I am going to fast forward through the whole damn thing till I get to the end because the one thing that I was trying to talk about, I can't find anywhere on the internet. The only thing that pops up is Don't Stop Believing by Journey because the crew hated the song. Then they put that in the diner. That's not what I was talking about. The very last song that plays, I'm pretty sure, is Three Bells by the Browns, which was Jim Ed Brown, who, rest in peace, I, I loved and I got to know, and we were talking about that, and the fact that I can't type that in the in the internet, ah, the the fact that I can't type that in the internet and find it is annoying. Is annoying as hell. The only thing that comes up is "Don't Stop Believing," and it it that bothers me. It it just I, this was already my pick, and now I'm even more angry about it because I can't find Apparently, the end of the. Apparently, Three Bells plays multiple times in that final season, not just in the final episode. Yeah, but that, that. Why can I not type that in and find that out? I've never watched an episode of The Sopranos. No. Oh. Well, and 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 this is what I was about to well, say. So that that's a generation shift because this this TV show was unlike anything else that had come out at all. It had put. And you're H- right, HBO's, because we're talking about it. Yeah. This is exactly the, why they did this. This is why they did but this. But it annoys the absolute hell out of me. What I wanted was <laughs> was like at the end of, um, oh gosh, what's the, Leo DiCaprio, he's the, he's the undercover with Jack Nicholson. Why am I forgetting the name of this movie? It's in Boston. Undercover? Italian talk- job? No, 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 no. I know what he's talking about. No. Go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, I'm anyway, not even going to tell you. You get to the end of the movie and... <laughs> What is it? Come on. Don't do this to not, me. No. Come on. Oh. Yeah, I'm going to make you look it up. No. Because I've been on my phone this whole podcast oh, so, trying to so find this. Nice. I'm going to make you look it up. Because um, <laughs> Wahlberg comes in at the end and gives you yep. the closure that you want. And you're like, yes. You want the justice. finish of the Thank movie. You. Thank and you. And you see it. And you're like, yes. This the is Departed. Awesome. The Departed. Yes. Gosh dang it. <laughs> Gosh dang it. Um, yes. The Departed. So gave bad. you Gave me the closure that I wanted in The Sopranos that I never got. I just, I just wanted an end. I don't care if the director has come out and told me what happens after the camera's let me cut. It, let me put it I this don't way. care. I, I wanted to see it. I didn't love the end of Breaking Bad, but there was closure there. Sure. I hated the end of The Sopranos. How dare you? Go ahead, Ry. What's yours? While The Sopranos did ignite a feud among the TV community. My favorite series of the 2000s was undoubtedly Dexter. Dexter was... Yeah, but I got another season. But the ending of the first, like... That's part like of saying Dexter. you didn't like the no, ending no, 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 of no. Lucifer because it didn't well, end me, and then no, they no. gave it, it another season. The way that, that the climax of that, to, to finish off with him just unplugging his sister from life to life support and tossing her in the ocean and, and well, literally taking his boat into the storm. <laughs> we already did spoilers because I said Stefan died in the vampire diary. That is so. just a, like abhorrent to do that. He should have either been arrested or there should have been something that came to a head given all of the encounters that Dexter had. That was just a terrible ending to an unbelievable show. Look up a list of the worst TV show Endings of all time because I'm pretty sure it's going to be Seinfeld that we have to put as the fourth, but for sure. Also, shout out to the show Nashville, which on ABC ABC ended perfectly, and then CMT picked it up for one more season, and it ended terribly. And that was so frustrating because they tied everything up so perfectly, and then they're like, "Ha, ah, just kidding, everyone's alive." Sorry. CMT, I love you. Uh, do not, uh, I do not endorse anything that he is currently saying. <laughs> you're, you're wonderful, and we appreciate all Out the help with parts. everything. But man, <laughs> I don't know. I kind of feel like Cracked.com would have a good opinion on this. Oh, sure, yeah. <laughs> right? Okay, as, the, sure. as the worst <laughs> Give us top TV five. endings of all time. Uh, I did look it up, by the way. Dexter made 13th on their list. But the top five worst TV show endings of all time, according to our good friends at Cracked.com, is number five, Saint Elsewhere. What? Uh, yeah, that was before at, your time. That was before you. At number four, Castle. No. Yeah, I get that. At number three, according to Cracked.com, Battlestar Galactica. The original. Bears yeah, I was going to say the original. Oh, this is a terrible list. At number two, <laughs> Battlestar Galactica Reboot. I don't know. They, they really loved Battlestar they Galactica. Love, somebody number one, really loves that. the worst TV show finale of all time is Charlie's Angels. 
No, this list is horrible. So that's Seinfeld, a terrible list. N- nor okay. friends, really. That's it, all right. Let's go. Let's do this. Seinfeld the four, is the fourth one. Seinfeld is the fourth one. Yeah. All right, and I want to see what you guys think. All right, this has been a very long podcast. We love you guys. Thanks for letting us uh, goof off a little bit today. Absolutely fantastic Monday. Cheers, guys. All right. Make sure you vote. And we're out.